present you today um, how to use Python as a brain for your devices. A brain in the mean of having rules on the control of all your devices. Uh, by the way, I'm Jonathan Chamoul from Hackspark, which is an, an online shop um, for electronics and GMS Informatic, where we, where we do consulting around basically this. So what kind of devices do you want to control or get data from and to? Lumps, heating, um, heating and cooling devices, phones, beacons, health devices, everything that can fit you, feed you data, even why not your bike, your car, or whatever. Because we want to add intelligence to our devices. Um, maybe like you are coming home, your phone sends data to your home hub, and, and your apartment gets ready for, for, for when you arrive. And well, because we're geeks for fun and hack. So it's basically that um, you have a lot of devices sending data. Here we will use an MQTT broker, uh, which, which is just like a messaging broker with channels on which you can uh, publish and subscribe data to and, and from. We will have um, an HTTP server to, to well make a bridge between our MQTT server and our um, user devices, and we'll also have an intelligence server which will be here. All this is proprietary in the cloud of each vendor. So problem is that uh, your light won't work with your heater. Uh, your car won't work with your door lock. That can, that can seem strange, but it can have uses. What we want to do is to stay local, have everything in-house, uh, maybe on a little Raspberry Pi in your house or whatever. And also, a lot of people are using JavaScript. 19% of Internet of Things respondents indicating they use JavaScript and Node.js for development. For, for server-side stuff, I'm not quite fond of it, and I prefer to use Python. What technologies are we going to use? On the device side, we will use uh, ESP8266, which is a very, very cheap microcontroller. I will show you some uh, in a moment. Um, it's really cheap. You can add Wi-Fi uh, to your device for like a dollar, so it's nothing. Uh, we will use also MQTT, which is the um, pub sub broker I was speaking before. We'll also use beacons on Bluetooth low energy. I won't cover this part here, but it's also something that can be interesting. So on the software side, we'll use the Mosquito MQTT server, which is basically the standard now. There is also a Python MQTT server, which is a Python uh, client for uh, for the Mosquito MQTT server, and we will use JavaScript for the front end on a little web app we will make, and Python for, 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 for the web server and the event server. So let's start. We'll install Mosquito with Docker, one line, it's installed. To flash ESP Easy, which is a firmware for the ESP8266 to make MQTT, let's connect to the broker. We import uh, the MQTT library, we create, a we, we, we create a client, we connect to localhost, which was TT server we created before with Docker. We, we start a loop and we subscribe here. This means everything. We could also make a better pass, but here we, we want to see everything that happens. Now we add a little callback when we receive a message, get received message stuff each time we get a new message. Let's have some little nodes that are here, the nodes like this one, which have a LED and a button. This LED will subscribe on three channels, one for each color. Uh, it's PWM, which means pulse width, pulse width modulation, which means the power you will give to the LED, basically. It's a bit more complicated than that. But So we have our node here, slash our node, slash PWM, slash the number of the pin on this board, command on, and we send the value here. The value is, uh, is from 0 to 1023 here. We set the value and we send it. And since we, we subscribe to all the messages, we see here how the messages are sent. So slash luminot, slash PWM, etc. Let's be a bit more intelligent and on, on have a gamma table for our LEDs. I won't lose you, but it's to have a good color correction. We will 
we will uh, set our devices in a list and, and save the states in a dictionary. On, on, a, on our set RGB function, now we'll save the last state. Now, let's make a web app. Uh, we will use Bottle, which is just like Flask, if you know. Well, most of you should know Bottle, I guess. Uh, we, will we will serve our static file here. We'll just make an index, which is a very, very simple web page, which is just having an ID app here and calling our app, dot app slash index dot gs. We will add some new routes, one which is devices view, which will send a JSON dictionary with our devices current state. And we will make another route which will have a post method on slash color slash device, for example, slash color slash luminode. And it will get JSON with R, G, and B as 0 to 250 uh, <laughs> 55 values, and it will just call set RGB and return the, the, the current full state. We, 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 we will make some JavaScript for it using uh, React. Um, some people might know React here. It's JavaScript, so it's not really the, um, the scope of this conference, but make a little component named app, uh, which will have a state of our devices, and we'll call every one second a fetch device function. The fetch device function will call our slash device controller, which sends a, a JSON object in, uh, containing devices, and we will basically set our current component state to this. Color change will post the color we need. Get color will will just uh, return um, a color for CSS and HTML from an array. This is just a little kitchen. And um, well, we will we are making a little widget with with for for each item or um, server sends us create one div here with one heading with the name. And here, we will use a color picker widget, uh, which is already made in React, and, and have uh, change events, etc. But We will just send events when we get them. We will compile this, because as you've seen, it's uh, SCMA script 6, uh, which isn't really your regular JavaScript. Uh, we had classes and things like that. So we will compile it using Browserify. I won't enter into the detail, but it permits to go from the app.gs6, which was like JavaScript and XHTML, to a regular JavaScript file um, that can be used by any browser today. Let's run that app. Um, we'll just make a bottle.run on 0, 0, 0, 0, which is for the public. You're using a past script server on port 8080. If we go to see that app, it looks like that. We have four little widgets with colors, and, on one, on, 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 and we can click on the widget and set the color. I thought about giving a demo of this, but I couldn't put my laptop, so that's just in screenshots. But anyway, we want, we can also add some rules to it. For example, if we want to highlight a device, uh, highlighting a device will mean that the device we are selecting will be in green and the others will be in red. That's just an example of a rule you can make in your application. On an highlight, you put all the devices in red, green, blue, 255 in blue, so it's full blue. My devices that are here are all blue. Here is my rule. I will get if the message.topic is slash my node slash button slash state. Those devices send this kind of message on the MQTT broker. This is a really dirty code. You shouldn't do that like this. You, do, you should like uh, subscribe to the good messages and everything, but it's... So we will highlight this device and, and if we receive a zero from a device, it means that the button has been released. We unhighlight every, everybody. Bad contact. Yeah, okay. Again, I do it. I release, it's blue, I click, it's green. I can do it on all the nodes. Yeah. So it basically means I'm receiving messages uh, from each of those nodes. Those nodes are only connected to a USB hub for the power. They are not uh, connecting for the data. 
My laptop is um, is a Wi-Fi hotspot, serving the app on on the nodes are connecting to this Wi-Fi hotspot on the MQTT server. So so the devices could basically be anywhere in the world, and they will react each one according to another according to those rules. Um, the good part about this is that you can have um, a light in your in your living room and have it react to you coming back home or or for example if you want if you want to 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 have a good mood in your in your living room you can just uh, have something that that listens to you and you say okay put the light a bit lower and it will do it and you can do a lot of actions whether if you are at home or not. For example, um, we can have uh, relays uh, on your eating devices and if you forgot it on while, while, while going out of home, uh, the system will just maybe remind you and you can say it, okay, uh, turn it off. Another thing is that with MQTT you can have thousands of devices on the same network. With one broker, you can have likely 10,000 of devices, so it's really made for a cloud scale. And it's really light. It can run on a Raspberry Pi or whatever little device you have. To go further on, on, this, uh, on this direction, we can use Python on a microcontroller. It exists with MicroPython, PyMite and others. I don't have time here, but I can show you later if you want. Uh, we can add uh, four 3.3 MHz RF devices that you have at home uh, that can just be connected to your MQTT network with gateways. Uh, you can add uh, Bluetooth low energy devices uh, to, to get like proximity sensing uh, with beacons all over your home. You can get feedback from the devices, um, um, add loggers and graphs for temperature, air quality, pollution can be also useful and it goes on and on. I've made a little plugin based project um, which is kind of like this. It doesn't have the MQTT part yet, but I'm working on it. It's axpark.simpledomotics. It's on Bitbucket. It's a public repository that you can check out. It's, it's made to have your little domotic hub at home. And uh, there is example to make a little alarm uh, with, with door sensors and things like that. So thanks. Uh, you can find uh, this presentation uh, as a notebook. Uh, every, everything is running from, from this notebook, um, a Jupyter notebook. So all the code that is here is working, and you can get it at this address. So and if you have any question, you can find me on Twitter, and, and, and it's also my GitHub and Bitbucket handle. Uh, I've also la launched a shop uh, to sell electronic devices and all you need to do this kind of thing at taxpark.fr. Uh, the question is, uh, if I can explain again how to get the devices run code that I can communicate with. Here I've cheated a bit. I've used uh, ESP Easy, which is a firmware that is already done, that, that has uh, the function we've seen here. Uh, basically, uh, the ESP8266 is a microcontroller. You can, can put any code you want on it. Um, there are li uh, libraries, either in Python, Lua, or C, um, to communicate in MQTT. Uh, the firmware I've used is written in an Arduino-like language. Well, re re really Arduino, because no Arduino can, can, can run on it. And, um, and I've just put this firmware and configured it. So, so there is a switch command, PWM are connected. Um, so here I've called that part from here. Uh, the nodes listen on slash luminode, slash luminode 2, 3, 4, which are the ID of those nodes. And they listen on slash luminode, slash, for example, for, for this, slash PWM, slash the port number. So I've just sent command via MQTT directly to the microcontroller. So, so here I'm just making the code on the server side and not micro on the microcontroller side, but it could also be there. So the question is, um, how can you secure uh, those devices? Yeah, it's notorious for having really, really poor security. Um, the MQTT protocol, you can have 
uh, login system on, on the authorization and authentication system to, to, to be able to subscribe and publish. And this is um, some settings you can put on the Mosquito uh, broker. Uh, you can say, OK, this guy can connect, this guy can't. This guy can do this thing, and this, uh, and this guy can't. And moreover, if you have a little application server like we have here, you could secure, secure this application server and, and make it filter what can pass through and what can't. So the question is, um, how do you connect legacy devices that aren't in Wi-Fi or IP connectivity to this kind of system? Um, there are a lot of projects around this, actually. There is one which is in Python, but is in Ruby, I think, and not JS, if I'm not wrong, um, uh, in which you can just uh, drop boxes on, on put links to, to connect them to MQTT. Basically, you have to have a receiver. For example, for the 433 megahertz devices, which are the most used now on the market for door sensor, proximity sensors, and all that, you can have a receiver for this in USB, just like the RFXCOM or other standards, and make a little app that will be a gateway for it. Or you could use um, that project. I don't remember the name. I can find for I can find it for you later if you want. That will have a, a graphical interface to make this kind of link. Thank you. Thank you.